Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, live from the remote location at an Airbnb in San Diego, California. Didn't expect that one, did you? Unless you follow me on this, on social media. Uh, out here for, you know, a few different reasons, um, including uh, a, a meeting for the first time uh, with us today, uh, Alex Cars, uh, also from the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, and, and now I understand the geography of that a little bit more, of power to the Smarks. Um, um, uh, uh, I... I keep wanting to say obsessed with wrestling, but that's wrong. I am so sorry. My brain is broken when it comes to that, Alex. Tell me what you do. <laughs> Occupy for wrestling. Uh, Damn it, Occupy. It's okay. I'm so sorry. Also, also, two things. One, it feels weird seeing you from across computer screens. Again. Um, and two... Because <laughs> we've actually met yes, each other in person. Yes. And two, San Diego. It's German, you know. San Diego, it's German. For a whale's vagina. Well, I'm not saying that out loud of here. Um, <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. We'll, we'll talk a little bit, and I think we we'll, might talk about what we can for the weekend. I don't know. I'm, fi- I'm figuring out how to do this and trying to... We'll figure that out myself. somehow. Uh, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. <clears throat> Lucha. Uh, but anyways, um, with us to tell us how, how all of our... our, our uh, our, our pronunciations are wrong, uh, except for, of course, San Diego, is Antonio Garza in El Paso, Texas. No, no, uh, San Diego is also wrong. Uh, you say San Diego, <laughs> San Diego, okay? San, San Diego, <laughs> San Diego. Yeah, no, perfect, perfect. Yes. San Diego. <laughs> of- of course, the WrestlingRevolution.com. We're all kinds of cultured here. Uh, also, also uh, uh, practically a neighbor to him is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, Eamon Payton. Hey, a good like five hundred mile away neighbor. Hi, San Antonio. Work, yeah, you know when you travel across country, you actually kind of understand where things are. Uh, uh, and I still don't understand where Tennessee was, to be quite honest, last month, but uh, it's educational. And geography also, is weird. Geography is so weird. Uh, also with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, holding down the East Coast for me, um, is Mad Mike. That's me, Sorg. Here comes the money. Oh, he's got that WrestleMania 32 money right there. It's that really awesome. Buying. I didn't notice. There's actually the Hell in the Cell on the back. <laughs> nice. That means he's buying the equipment for the new studio coming up. Uh, so thank you for that. No, uh, Sorg, yeah. um, this note is not legal currency. It is a prop. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It says it right there. It says it that right there. That means if we're buying props, it's legal. Fair point. Uh, Fair point. Uh, Touche. So welcome to the first Wrestling Mayhem show I believe that uh, we have uh, done online that has nobody from our home place of Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, it, no, it's actually, not true. We did we did a we did a Mayhem show in my apartment. Yeah, but I mean like like the remotely remotely like this. You know what I mean? Um, and I think if again understanding geography a little more, I think we're representing every time zone in this uh, in this Woo! one as well. And I'm not sure if we've accomplished that because I learned like Garza, you're in the mountain time zone, right? Yes. Yes. I I either didn't realize that or I re realized that, and uh, and we're bringing it together here. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us. And thank you guys for joining us at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, you can check out the show. I'm this is the part. I, it's weirding. I'm reaching for the, my keyboard to switch the titles and the shots, uh, but that won't do anything <laughs> at this point. Uh, so so just press an invisible button. Over I there. did. I, I completely <laughs> did that when I was trying to come back from like showing a website on the last show here. Um, you think Sores confused? Slice on Broadway is wondering like, hey, where's that pizza guy hit? That comes to us every week. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I should have given him a heads up or something that we're not there. Like, thanks for sponsoring us. Either that, Nobody's... or Missy has a lot of pizza she's eating oh, right now. She could, she should, she could have completely. I, 
she ordered Chinese food earlier. She could have completely just just had pizza, you know. It's like it's like no, no, her sponsor. It's cool, you know. Just she could have had a mayhem show watch party at her house. Um, <laughs> but anyways, you, I'm hoping you're getting some pizza if you're not uh, at home. Uh, uh, from somewhere and sitting down and watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show, listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play, uh, Facebook, YouTube, all kinds of things. Um, and, uh, da, 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 da. and I have notes somewhere. Uh, live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com around 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which I learned is, what the heck time is it? 5 o'clock Pacific Time. This is so weird. There's a light outside. There is light outside. Yeah, it's there. brighter than it is. It's brighter than it is for you guys in Texas. It's amazing. Um, in but fairness, the, there's light outside in Texas right now. Well, stop lying, Amy. It's stop it. dark. Stop here. it. Um, but uh, and uh, you can also you can also drop us a line at that email address. Good times. Good times. Good times. It's good times at, Good times at wrestlingmamshow.com uh, and 412-206-WMS0. And thanks to our Patreons, patreon.com slash wrestlingmayhemshow, including, of course, here on the show, Alex Cars and Antonio Garza of the wrestlingrevolution.com and Power of the Smarks. And uh, I got to be careful. I can't do this. The, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's uh, Foundation what? for Podcast Betterment. Well, that I can do, but I can't do the other one because there's neighbors. Oh, you mean, you mean the one for... Oh! Oh! Diggity! Woo! I don't. Yeah, there's there's neighbors. See, sort of guy, help you out. I help you out. Thank Sorg. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tagging you in on that. Sorg, one. Sorg doesn't want to get a negative star review on Airbnb. That's that's basically what's going review. on here. Is I know. Like, yes, they they, they review you as a tenant. Oh man, you don't. Yeah. So keep make sure you put the toilet seat down, Sorg. Sorg, hide all that stuff under your bed. <laughs> I hide all the stuff under the bed. Sorg, <laughs> only steal one thing. A roll of toilet paper. What is the shampoo rule in an Airbnb? I'm still trying to learn that. But anyways, but um, from there, let's talk about wrestling, guys. Wrestling. Uh, before I get in trouble. Uh, Extreme Rules is this weekend. Um, Hashtag Ladybug learn, Sex. I will learn how well the Extreme, how uh, well the WWE app works remotely, as I, I, I will still be in California somewhere in the desert. Uh, so, so that'll be fun. Uh, but uh, meantime, we have a pretty. I, I I know, like you guys, whether you guys thought of how it turned out, like leading into a payback had a really decent lineup, and I think uh, some were dismayed to see that this is basically mostly the same matches, but with uh, extreme rules. But Riz, uh, in his email that we'll get to later in the show, uh, he's excited for it. Um, so, what's your general kind of outlook? By the way, I just geeked out because I just noticed it's presented by Ninja Turtles too. Um, so. well, well, Sorg, um, something I noticed last night, speaking of Ninja Turtles 2, both Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, and Ninja Turtles 2, Out of the Shadows, have WWE champions in them. <gasps> You're right, Super Shredder. Mm -hmm. Kevin Nash. Mm -hmm. Amazing how that works, isn't it? You know, when I met, well... I don't know about Met, like he was in the hallway talking to Ric Flair when I was happened to be there in the same space. Um, like I probably more geeked out because he's from Ninja Turtles too than being Kevin Nash. But anyways, uh, so that aside, that's me. Who was I just talking? About? I think I was just talking about Veronica about Ninja Turtles because of my wallet. Um, but anyways, uh, Extreme Rules this Sunday, of course. AJ uh, uh, Roman Reigns uh, sh shenanigans will be afoot. Do we? Have, is there a tag match set up as well between Uzos and? I want to no. You mean Bob Dylan's and New Day? No, no, no. no, no, no I'm no, talking no. about. I'm talking about Usos like and the and the non club. Uh, I don't yeah. know why there would be. No, yeah, they've had that done so many times because they're going to be involved in in Extreme Rules matches. Yeah, you're right, and they've had at least two or three matches already, which Usos seem to win all the time. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be much like we saw this last month. That's we're getting to that part where again shenanigans. You're not getting an awesome wrestling match between Roman Reigns and AJ Styles. There'll, there'll be that in there too, but these people will be involved. A lot of hardware will be involved, and I think, and it'll be, you know, I, I think it'll be, it'll be that kind of thing that, you know, we're looking for something to happen at these pay per views, right? Does it, does it feel like they really haven't? I don't know. For me, at least with this main, as far as the main event goes, they haven't done a lot in between the two pay per views. No. Like, the whole story going into Payback was 
is AJ Styles and, and the club aligned? And the story is kind of still, are AJ Styles and the club aligned? Like, Well, no, it's not that they're, whether they're aligned, because he's just kind of well, gone all in on it. But now now the question isn't that, because he doesn't have to be a nice guy with this anymore, because the way they, they've kind of shifted it a little bit going into this. But he's um, kind of still like, I don't need the club. Like, no, I'm no. He needs the club. To right, me. right. And the story is, you know... The story is, you know, you're you're still not good enough to be a WWE champion. You know, the story is 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 your guys against my guys. It's 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 you know, blood is blood is better than than the than your club. You know, which I I you know whatever you think of that grouping, but I, I actually kind of love that that um, that that Uso has his his family shield. You know, very literally. And, See, uh, the the only thing about that is though. The Usos will never look badass. No. Absolutely. I'm sorry. No, that, that they will not. They try. But the mm-hmm. Usos, at least one of them, I don't know which one, um, has smiling syndrome. Anytime he, <laughs> anytime he tries to look menacing, it's always like, ah! Like, yeah, this is, this is scary, right? Ah! I'm like, no. Well, also no, being it just Wayne doesn't work. Roman has kind of, and we've talked about this for months, but I feel like it's also kind of dragged the Usos into that whole like mm. crowd reaction of like, oh, these are guys that we're, they want us to like, but we don't really like, like, you know what I mean? But the kids love all of them, so you know. The fact that they're doing five-hour energy commercials doesn't help their cause either. That's fair. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Garza, what do you think about this setup? I, I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, I know there's going to be shenanigans. I, I don't know why this is in a cage match, but it's okay. Uh, it's not the match I'm mostly looking forward to with the pay-per-view, but I'll watch it. Mm-hmm. Well, you, Cars. Maybe Cars. Is Cars think, frozen? He might be frozen. He okay. might be frozen. I think I'm sorry. We'll see if he comes yeah. back. Um, um, but yeah, I, I think they can't, they can't really do a cage match for this because you still need a main event for Money in the Bank. And unless unless true. unless we're getting a big return like uh, Seth Rollins or Randy Orton or John Cena or Bray Wyatt, which according in this, to Vince McMahon, we probably will be. Yeah, I think I think any of those those people named will be in play because they're setting up Bray Wyatt stuff before he got injured. So I think that's completely a possibility. Um, okay, from there because this was what ended off Raw last night actually. Women's Championship, of course, Charlotte Nat- Natty. Um, I loved. I loved when Charlotte said, "Dad, this is my ring." Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that sets up a lot of interesting things. I think Crazy Ric Flair uh, trying to face off with, with Shane last night was really interesting. Um, this is a great women's uh, uh, match coming up, and I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be good. I think and it's a submission match. I, I think they're they're the, the two that can pull it off. I, but, and and I agree with you on that. But Charlotte wins, right? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Like Charlotte I don't wins. like. See, that's the only thing that kind of bugs me about this because the way they're playing it up is that Natty is going to win, and we all know she's not because Charlotte's well, going to drop that to Sasha. Well, I think Charlotte should win, especially with this being like though. I love the the idea of this being Rick's not on the ring side for her. And like Sorg mentioned, like that promo where she joins that Raw, that line on Raw saying like this is my ring. I feel like this is the moment where Charlotte kind of steps out of that mold and is finally like she is her own character in a sense. You yeah, know, not to big, say she, not to say she'll she'll keep all of the moves and stuff like that. She's not going to change any of that. But as far as her being the character of terrified, you know, woman who needs her her father to help her. Like, that's gone now. She advances herself as a character, which will lead to a better match between her and Sasha, hopefully, down the line. Right. Right. I think that's a bigger Uh story here. Like, Natalia is, you know, (laughs) fairly, fairly, uh, uh, Um, uh, Cars is back with this. So feel feel free to chime in, Cars, if you've got any opinion of of, the women's situation. I think that was the one uh, thing from Raw that I was most, like, happy about with the Charlotte Natalia thing is that you finally get that moment. Where Charlotte seems to be like, eh, maybe this whole hanging out with my dad thing isn't the best thing I need to do. (laughs) 
I think my dad's not cool enough anymore. <laughs> it, it, is, it does feel like that. Like your reactions and everything do, do kind of feel like that, doesn't it? Uh, but no, I think it's a lot of fun with that. So um, just know your thoughts on the women's title. Uh, the Fatal 4-Way. Uh, I think it's being expertly done for, you know, not feeling like it's a thrown together Fatal 4-Way. I love that we got uh, Owens and Zane in a tag match last night together. Um, just... It, it's interesting in different ways to throw those together. Could you imagine if we did like what we've seen how many times it, where like a Zane and Owens like accidentally win the tag titles? If the tag titles weren't as you know well contested as they are right now, mm -hmm. um, I think that could be a lot of fun to throw those two together to see what they could do. Because uh, it's not like they haven't been tag team champions before. Yeah, I mean, it uh, also helps that they have history being tag right, team champions. Right. Like, and and that's canon. Like WWE has acknowledged that that they've been tag team partners in other promotions before. Like that is realistically something we could do. And I think whenever, like maybe a year, year and a half, two years down the line, when one of them, presumably Owens, has the world title, you can do that feud. Like let's say Sami Zayn wins Money in the Bank, and Owens is the champion. And some wacky GM pairs them together because, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we had the Money in the Bank winner team with the WWE champion for the tag titles? That's something new and different. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I think we're no. Really think about it. They w they win the tag titles in one match. Zayn knocks him out, and he wins the WWE title in the same match. I like it. <laughs> See, I like, it. like it'd be fun. It'd be really really cool. It bring a little more meaning to the money in the bank than I think really the last couple of years have not yeah. really done well with. So, um, cool, cool. Any other thoughts on the fatal four way in the IC title? Hey, ASC title is like contested and interesting these days, you know? Yeah, uh, I agree. And that's, that's good to see. Even, even, even sometimes it does feel like there's too many, there's too many contenders, you know, and there should be more than, well, then we'll throw all the contenders together. But, um, I mean, looking at that list of talent, it's going to be a fun match, and they've been doing a lot of interesting things, interesting things uh, with the week here. I'm just right. glad Owens wasn't seriously injured. Garza? I actually feel that uh, Miss is going to bring down a little bit the level of the match. I think it would, if it was just, yeah, I think if it was just, just like saying Owens and Cesaro, it would be like, the greatest match we've seen in, in months, but now with Miz, it's just going to be like the really, really good match we've seen in months. Do, do you feel like this is going to be like when we had like a three-way with like, what was it? Was it Sasha and Charlotte with, with, uh, with Nikki Bella? And you're like, oh no, she's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, every time we see like a pairing of Owens and Sami Zayn or Owens and Cesaro or Zayn and Cesaro, we're going to be like, yes, yes, yes. And then Miz comes in like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you have to remember, this was probably where Neville was supposed to be. If Neville didn't break his leg. Well, I I, I, I think it works better with Miz. I, yeah. I, I mean, I enjoy Miz's work as a heel. I think he does an amazing job. I, you know, he work, is his work in the ring on the level of the other three? You could argue no, but what he brings forth in character and what him and Maurice as a unit have been bringing to this whole thing, I think it's been working perfectly. I like the fact that he's the champion going into this. So, you know, because, yeah, we could put the belts on Owens or Cesaro or Sami Zayn, but to put it on somebody like The Miz and have those three guys chasing after it makes it much more interesting, I feel. You know? Like, it's, yeah, it would have been a great match if it was just those three, but I also like the wrinkle of having Miz in there. Like, it, it, proves, it puts a little heat on the match, which I enjoy. Yeah, it does. It does, absolutely. Yeah, because actually, if it was just the three of those guys... It'd be great, smart, but smart crowds wouldn't care who wins. Especially yeah. if they're going to be in Jersey, you might have a dueling three-way chant like Cesaro for Zayn and for Owens. Like the Cesaro Miz match, uh, payback was really phenomenal, and I think the part of that is because the crowd was so invested in wanting Cesaro to win, both because Cesaro is amazing, but also because they don't like the Miz. Right. Right, and there's a lot of like fans would be happy with basically anybody but the Riz winning that. Um, not that I would be terribly disappointed if if he did win it, because you know more Miss TVs and we're used to just being awesome. Um, I'm cool with that. So, um, tag team championships. Uh, Sorg. Sorg. 
time the sword, machines are we, in play. We mustaches. Need, we need to talk about that time machine. 2009 segment. was Kofi's best year. Uh, it that was I can't even I, I can't even. All right, Sorg. I I watched Raw in a bar last night because I was also watching the Pens game. Yeah. And the bar was full of like indie wrestlers from the local Fed who did not pop at anything. Like they were no selling the whole show. As Ex- indie wrestlers do because yes. they're except jaded. that that uh that New Day segment. Like the New Day segment popped everyone in the entire bar. When he came out and was doing the accent, doing the boom 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 everyone lost their damn minds. It was amazing. Stopped whatever I was doing to watch that one. That was great. <laughs> um no, I and I'm glad and and I think I think we're gonna have a good match out of this too and and I kind of hope this becomes a, an ongoing feud for whatever reason. Um, I don't expect New Day to drop it, to be quite honest. They're not gonna drop it yet. Um, two. I think they are. They're two. I feel like they need if they're gonna drop it, they're gonna drop it big. And I, I don't think the Raw villains are there yet, as far as like. I, I feel that they lost the belt. They would be underwhelming. I think they are. I think they are, and I think we're gonna get like. Um, like a couple months of switching back and forth. It could be. That could be. I, I real because I, I really, I think they want to kind of strike while the iron's hot with the VOD villains, and like because you gotta look at this. Like Roman Reigns isn't losing that belt. Um, more than likely, a face is winning the IC title, even if it's Owens. That's technically like a face. So you need kind of in, a heel in, in win the in there, the, and I think that's like where the VOD villains yes. come in. Yeah. And and I think that's where the VOD villains come in. Could be Rusev too. Mm. I, I can see Rusev winning. We're also Go, going, going to that. Yeah, maybe yeah, Kalisto, <laughs> Kalisto, and Rusev. I'm really happy. I love I love the beating up your buddy and wa- making you watch uh, angle they did. Uh, I I love I, that Rusev's back to being fantastic. Rusev is it, Rusev is the Rusev that we love. The the big huggable uh, I will crush you Rusev and and it's fantastic. He is he is like a and 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 just him getting pissed off and yelling at the announcer like the one you guys see the one where he like interrupts Todd Phillips like setting up for a shot or something like that and just yells mm-hmm. about what it, you know whatever happened to them last week on Raw. Um, those are tremendous. Um, you know I go they just to, need to keep him the hell away from John Cena. Yeah, exactly. They really do. They really do. Um, but uh, no, nah, I, I think they're doing great stuff there. Callisto as U.S. champion has been tremendous, and he's going to keep this up. He's going to be the next giant killer, you know, between Ryback and and Rusev. Maybe maybe giant career killer, uh, as oh. the case may be working out. <laughs> uh, but there you go. You know, so everybody gets everybody keeps getting pissed off uh, losing to Callisto apparently. So. Um, and of course, in our barn burner of a kickoff match, we're gonna have Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin in an ODQ match. Oh, because yeah. because I need to see Ziggler lose again. Again on the heart. pre-show. To break my heart. <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, no, it's good for. Well, no, and that's not true because Ziggler beat him last time. Yeah. 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 And this is gonna be a good precursor to Baron Corbin winning Money in the Bank, you guys. Oh. Uh, not, not that's not that groan is not a knock on Baron Corbin. I like Baron yeah. Corbin. It's just they have not done a good job of building him. If it's not Baron Corbin, it's Big Gas. I'm telling you. I, I just get sad. Vince is gonna want it on a big guy. I, I just get sad at Ziggler, uh, Jobber Ziggler, uh, for things like this. Right. You know, I was actually gonna just, touch that, on that the loose of police on that with all that talk about him being a jank. So I was whatever uh, happened to the cars, the cars, any, any, any thoughts on any of these before we move on? I haven't heard from you a little bit. Right. Right. I think the is going to be able to the um, uh, big show was called back to his whole planet. And he said, goodbye. Thank you, Poochie. No, yeah. honestly, we don't need Big Show. We don't need Big Show on these shows. We well, don't maybe, need Big Show on these shows anymore. Maybe Big Show. Maybe Big Show after he made the comment about not being used well his entire career decided to not get called back. 
Aww. So <laughs> that seems to happen a lot because, I mean, you know, the, the Ryback was saying the same thing before his big issue. So uh, Also, Sorg, mm -hmm. you, you forgot a match. How could you no, forget? I, I did not forget a match because <laughs> we're going to talk about it in the next segment. Well, we can still talk about the match. But yeah, like, well, let's, I mean, in the context of this feud, let's talk about it. All right. So you got Jericho, 15,000 Jack had destroyed it all. He got Ambrose. Um, Mitch. Rest in peace, Mitch. Mitch. Rest in peace. Uh, we went from uh, we don't care when these two are in the ring talking to each other to, okay, this is this is pretty fun. Um, did, did we? Yeah, I, I, really I really like that promo last night. I remember a few of us coming around on it. And, and I, it was, I think they just had a bad week. I just can't. I just couldn't with this whole thing. Now, my only problem is whatever this Ambrose Asylum is going to be, and we'll talk about the context of making a new match like this, um, I don't want it to be what WrestleMania was, where we're like, we're going to do this big crazy thing, and there's a cage and all kinds of crap at the top, and we're not going to use any of it. You know, like, it can't just feel like another match. Oh, of course. I mean, they have to use the mop and, and bucket and, and potted plant. Yeah, and it can't be goof. You know nunchucks. What I mean? It just can't be. Good. Hey, don't talk ill of nunchucks, Eamon. Also, I, I, another really thing I hated about it. So, in the, according to Ambrose, at least in the match there is no escape. But there kind of is, like not to win the match, but you can escape. And you can escape mobs. like a normal cage match. Oh, that, well, well, that, I guess in theory. You know, there's nothing preventing them from escaping. <laughs> Well, except each other. Well, but <laughs> and then that mom um, can't climb can't climb a, a cage in a straight jacket. Um, I I don't know. It it felt very TNA to me. Did it Did it feel <laughs> lethal lockdowny to you? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because at least remember when they did um like remember when we did JBL Big Show with the barbed wire steel cage? That was in where Pittsburgh. It's, where it's literally yeah, I was like, there for that one. Where it's literally like, I, I know it was not the greatest match, but the concept of you can't escape is like, yeah, because there's fucking barbed wire at the top of the cage. And yeah, and they did it, but they did it, which is funny, cause, right, because he found a way to escape, right? Um, and and they did it in a state where you can't blade. Well, no, where, I know that. You, like back in the day when they still did that. And, you're, and we're just like, what are they going to do? Like, we know the commission won't let them do what we want to see, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it, it was it was kind of flat to begin with, but still. But also, like, this is the same thing, except instead of barbed wire, there's just weapons at the top. And like, going back to it, like what we saw in Mania, do you really they're think they're going to use the, the barbed wire back? Mop destruction? Because they didn't in Mania. Yeah, that's a concern too. Like they're not gonna they're gonna use the weird like wacky weapons, and it's like yeah. Oh. But also at WrestleMania, you had Dean going against the unstoppable juggernaut known as Brock Lesnar. Jericho's a guy who can take punishment. He in fact is there to take punishment and put people over. Brock Lesnar is there as an attraction to destroy people. Well, if, they, I mean, if they had him look too weak. I mean, in a sense of, are they going to use barbed wire? Like, not in a sense of, like... Is, yeah, is I think they will. Uh, they'll, they'll do something like he'll, he'll like... Hit know, him in him the and, gut. Yeah, him in the gut or something. That's, that's, that's what we end up with. I, I, I just imagine, like, the only thing that's missing from this is that on the top of the cage, there's a, there's a television, and the finish is that Dean Ambrose tries to yank it down and it explodes <laughs> in his face again, and he's learned nothing from that no, one shitty TLC no, match. No, no, Eamon, Eamon, Dean Ambrose has learned not to trust wires. That's why he destroyed an electric jacket. That's why he did this it. Is a, call, this is a, a good callback. That's a good callback. Well, all right, guys. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about those weird matches. Aim has got some funny ideas about that. But in the meantime, hey, let's uh, uh, shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, SliceonBroadway.com. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. And then, even though none of us are in Pittsburgh, which is the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, where they have a new store at PNC Park. Uh, but go slice, check them out. Uh, Rico and the guys are real awesome in supporting the show. And uh, feeding the guests that we have in every week when we are in the studio 
at least. Uh, so a, a big shout out to them. Go check them out. Slice on Broadway uh, .com. And they're down in Beachview on tracks as well as uh, Main Street and Carnegie PA. And uh, like I said, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, so big shout out to them and uh, support a uh, local business uh, in the Pittsburgh. If not, if you're supporting them. If you're somewhere else, like everybody on this panel is right now, support your local pizza joint because it just kind of goes right with uh, pro wrestling, right? So, all right, Eamon, uh, yeah, okay, so we saw this in uh, Amber, or Asylum match that's supposed to, supposed to be happening. Yeah, it screams a TNA. Even when I saw the name, I thought, like, I read a TNA spoiler by accident. Uh, so... <laughs> uh, it, it, when it was when I was reading, uh, I thought I thought I thought Mad Mike had given me the wrong description for last night's Raw wrap up. Uh, so, a Eamon, you had some ideas about like match types. Well, I think uh, we're, you know we live in 2016 now, and I think one of the running things right now with wrestling is people you know theorizing like what can be done, you know that hasn't already been done. What can be done to really surprise people? What can be done to shock people? And 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 especially in the case of like match types you know is is it possible for wrestling to produce a new match type that is you know that would you know that is something that can be done that to uh, to a scale where this becomes a thing that is immediately associated with wrestling like a ladder match like a tables match like you know whatever you know i i i i do think about that a lot because i mean there's already so much that's been done you know, WWE has tried. Remember, now now we have, like, steel stairs matches. That's a thing that's happening now. <laughs> they're not great, but they're happening. Um, uh, they're a thing. They're a thing. Yeah. What, what do you guys think? I think I'm with you, and I was actually uh, this this crosses over a little with Indie Mayhem show, but I was actually uh, our friends at Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Uh, they're having their second tournament of death uh show in West Virginia coming up and they, and it's a tournament. It's a tournament, right? And each match is a different match type. And I'm reading these things and, and I love what the guys do in there, but I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not currently a death match kind of fan. Right. Um, but I'm reading these things and, and, and they're using like, what was it? Carpet, carpet nails and, and light tube prisons and, and there was like some some construct they were doing that was that was like made of light tubes, and and they're being real inventive. But again, we're talking about things that are going to cut you, right? And it's not really. I mean, well, you can have that conversation, but you know, it's not something WWE is going to do. It's not really wrestling per se, right? It's that crazy extreme stuff. And you're you're right. Like, what can you do that still has that illusion of danger? that you want from like, we don't do scaffolding matches anymore. Right. Mm. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't, when I say that, it doesn't even necessarily have to be like hardcore in a sense. Like I love the idea of, you know, we're extreme rules. We're getting submission <laughs> matches, you know, that, you know, two out of three falls, Iron Man matches. Those are things as well. Like I know those, those also come in play and those also are really synonymous with wrestling as well, but I feast you're fired. King of the Mountain. <laughs> Sword, but King uh, of the Mountain's a rip off of a ladder match. Like, what, you know, uh, well, what about Grave Consequences? What about what Grave about Consequences? Even, uh, all match. night long. Okay. I, 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 I really, I mean, I love the matches. Like half hour I love the matches that John Underground does, but they're basically plays off of stuff that we've seen. You they're know? okay. They're the Aztec they're, Warfare is all based off the Royal Rumble. Right. You know. Yeah. They're marketed in a certain way, and that's really cool. Um, and Putting their own spin on it, yeah. But I don't know about just like new match types. The last time we had that, I feel was Ultimate X. Um, I will go you one better, and say Punjabi Prison. Fuck off! <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm being I'm being serious about this. Not the best match in the world, but it was definitely a different concept. It wasn't your standard cage match. There was other elements to it that gave it a different sense of like, uh, like drama. Yeah. Like I, I, like I, I mean, I said it like a dick, but that, that I think that's the most like besides like an elimination chamber. I think that came before Punjabi Prison. Like I think the Punjabi Prison was the last time they really tried something that wasn't like, and honestly. 
I think we should bring this back. I like the championship scramble. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that concept. I thought that was really fun. We're, ta- we're talking about the scramble. Or are we talking about the one where like a new you, you could win a championship in the middle of the match, but not but, but you weren't the champion. It was like an it yeah. was like an interim. Like if you held on, it's like playing fucking hot potato. But it was well, I like, really enjoyed like what it. They, like what they did with the hardcore title when we had like ten champions during the course of a WrestleMania match. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but those title those title changes weren't legitimate. Like they don't count in the record book. Like Brian, like Brian Kendrick was never a WWE champion, but he was he like held was the, yeah he held the title in utero until the match until the match was over and Triple H eventually won. But like I really enjoyed that concept, and I think it was just the execution that made it not work. Right, right. I really enjoyed that concept because like oh and Amy, we were watching something on the TNA Asylum. Oh, it was like a double elimination sort of thing. Um, like a, it's like fatal four way batting order, and like double elimination style yeah. match, like stuff like that. And 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 I agree. I, I don't know. I just I also don't know if there's one that can like I don't maybe maybe I, I may be wrong. I don't know if we're seeing more Ambrose Asylum matches. Maybe who knows? Maybe they'll try to beat that horse and, and try to make it a thing. But I don't see them creating another match type that is going to be so intrinsically linked um, to wrestling now. You I'd, know I'd, what I mean? I'd say, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not sure about completely new, new ideas match and, types oh, hey, wrestling someone, as a whole, be but I know I'd love to see some stuff that games. I've seen, like, you know, kind of um, on the indie uh, circuit, cars, cars, what do you think? make some sort of appearance in WWE or TNA. Because, uh, like, the Asylum match kind of feels a lot like, and there's been a lot of comparisons made to the, I think it was called the Clockwork Orange House of Fun match or whatever that Raven came up with some time ago. Um, so I'd like to see some ideas kind of make their way into WWE somehow. Like when they had the uh, slightly random 8-on-8 eight eight tag match or whatever. Mm. On, like it was on a Raw at some point because it was like four different tag teams like all eventually like got put into an 8-on-8 eight tag match or whatever. I was like, this is the closest thing we're probably going to see to this uh, Cybernetico in WWE. Yeah. Another one that I kind of was thinking of, I, 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 I feel like we need something that is sort of fitting to the style in which wrestling is kind of changing nowadays, kind of evolving. Uh, and one of the things I, I thought too, and, and Alex will like this because it links to Chikara, was um, there was a, a Chikara show. Yeah, uh, uh, World of back Sport. Where one yeah, of the matches based on, on the old uh, World of Sport. There were British wrestlers named Johnny St. and Johnny so. Kidd, and they had a British Rounds match, which is basically them, it's them mm-hmm. wrestling in five minute mm-hmm. rounds. Yeah. Like a world world of sports style of match. I like the idea of maybe doing something like that where it also involves, you know, a point system in a way. You like like a certain takedown or a like going off of like actual amateur wrestling maybe. Or kind of like the brawl for all. Kind of like the, I feel like the brawl for all could have been a cool concept. Yeah, if it wasn't it was just, if, if it was worked and not like Shoot fighting, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, so, it was executed so, poorly. But it, first, it, first of all, I want to give a shout out Lethal Lottery. Could be an interesting concept if if resurrected and done interestingly or right or a special like a weird WWE Network special like King of the Ring became last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, like your 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 idea reminded me of that time when I was at the gallery and the Juggalos and they got the the match where they had to smoke. Uh, smoke a joint every ninety seconds, and could, then <laughs> that'll go well. Wrestling. And then there was just giant bags of like, like, like funyuns and stuff that were that started, you know, coming into play. So oh, that God. was innovative. Like no, that was innovative and fun and interesting. Okay, um, I think I might be on a bloody mania nine or something. Sorry, was that called the highway to hell? It, actually, I think it might have been. And <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it very well could have been. Um, so. Um, 
but I mean that. But that's and exactly that's like that weird stuff that's fun and interesting, and it's why we watch indie wrestling and stuff, right? But again, you're you're right. It's not synonymous. It's not a Survivor Series. It's not a Royal Rumble. It's not a King of the Ring tournament. You know, and, and I'm not gonna lie. Um, I can't. All right, there, there's this, there was one Christmas Raw a couple of years ago where it was John Cena and someone else. I forget who it was, or it might have been the Battle of the Two Sanders or something like that. And it was a little ridiculous. But I think the concept could be interesting. You hide the WWE, you hide the title in some kind of enclosure. Like you actually, like you actually have to smash open the enclosure with something, incapacitate your opponent enough to smash open something to get the championship. The, um, that was uh, WCW Stanford. And the title fell. Match. fell out. Yes, yes, he's right. Wait, really? Remember Broker Chi versus Jeff Jarrett where they were smashing boxes that mm. were hanging above the ring to find the championship and one of them had like a picture of Scott. Yeah, Hall. but I am saying I'm saying like but that that was that was <laughs> random. That was random. I'm saying you actually have like it's something at the top of the ramp. Like and you have to fight your way to get to it. Oh, kind of like how they used to start XFL games. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm being serious. I think that no, could no, be, no, an, no. He, he, it's a different play no, on a ladder right, match. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, a it's different play like, on a ladder match. It, 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 it's also a different play on a, a stretcher match where the point is to put him on a stretcher and wheel him over a line by the ramp or something, mm-hmm. right? I mean, T- it, it, Mike, TNA kind of did that. Remember when, uh, I think it was Jeff Hardy and Magnus had a match. Oh, it was the Dixieland match where they started it as a cage match. You had to climb over the top of the cage to escape. Go up the ramp and then climb a ladder to grab mm-hmm. the belt. And I actually didn't mind that concept. I didn't mind that concept. It it got mired in TNA <laughs> booking bullshit, but like I think any any match that has more than two steps to win the match has a problem. Exactly, and that's why this would was just like one thing. It was like a weird challenge in like a Steve Austin broken skull challenge. Mm-hmm. Garza, yeah. I don't think we've heard about you on this topic yet. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think a. Uh, some the distinction that needs to be done is that I mean we could come up with new matches easily, but uh, I think what Amos was trying to ask uh, was can we make a match that will actually like go through the years and become like a legendary match like TLC or Money in the Bank? Because I mean, yeah, Punjabi person for instance was really unique at the moment, but was it really worth bringing back? Like even outside of Kali's uh, gimmick. And so I don't know, like that, that's where I think that the tricky part is here in this question. Well, I mean, the elimination chamber was something that lasted. Oh no, no, and yeah, I mean, it all it, it all de- it all depends on how you introduce it. No, that's yeah, like, really, what it depends it, on how you follow it up. I mean, Ultimate X was able to to become like this iconic match in TNA, except I mean, but Elevation X didn't. You know, I mean, yeah. It's how you follow. Well, it's because Whatever Eleva- it Elevation X, the first one, you had Rhino. Like yeah, yeah. you had Rhino, Rhino was a fair not fight. exactly the most mobile guy. Like, right. but I mean, do you guys remember uh, the first Monsters Ball match? Mm-hmm. Oh, I because people forget the, the the stipulation of the original Monsters Ball was that they were locked in a room for twenty four hours with mm-hmm. no food, water, or sunlight. Yeah. Uh huh. And they were all like wheeled out in boxes, and it was like. It was like supposedly the first time they had seen light in a day, yeah. like, Every and time. that was really, really cool. And now, and it's then it just literally... became a hardcore match. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They had a Monster Balls match, at Monster, yeah, Monster Ball match at a uh, IWC for Night of the Superstars, actually, uh, which is again a hardcore match. You know, more or less. Mm-hmm. But still, uh, every time you, every time I hear about that, how that was the, uh, you know, they were held in, held in, in no light for like, you know, a, a, a day. That reminds me of I think the first match between Piper and Hogan in WCW, where I think they had in San Francisco, and he stayed at at, uh, at uh, Alcatraz. Alcatraz for the mm-hmm. weekend, so he was a, he was more of a rabid animal or something, <laughs> which. That is up there in my mind with the jailhouse match with uh, Big Show, or, Big, sorry, Boss Nail, Big Boss Man and Mountie, yeah, Mountie. Big Boss Man and, and the Mountie. Uh, that, that, but again, it was kind of the video that supported it very well. Do you remember um, the graveyard match? Because yeah. now, now I'm just ranting on like WCW stuff. That's a WCW. Uh, it was Vampiro against the Kiss Demon. Uh, oh. WWE also had one too. Well, the, this the concept of this one was you fight in a legitimate graveyard. 
And then somehow, like, it gets to a point where the first one to race back to the arena wins. <laughs> Did they have monster trucks? They should have had monster trucks. No, they just had to do a running race. Basically. They should have just called it WCW's Wacky Races. <laughs> um, I mean, and, you know, we could have someone come along where that person's specific gimmick inspires another match, too. Because, like, without Mankind, there wouldn't have been a Boiler Room Brawl. Yeah. Would you have the Hell in a Cell without Undertaker? Yeah. You know? Um, and, and I was actually thinking about it a little bit. You're talking about... I, I was still on Pujami Prison Match. I'm sorry, in my head. But you could do that match again, but not make it bamboo. You know? Like, you can do a cage version of that. Because, like, I thought the bigger point of it Or was, plexiglass. The, yeah. the closest cage like plexiglass and PVC pipe or something like that, so right. it looks a little bit more artistic. Well, the closest closest like cage version of that was the kennel from hell, I knew because that had the concept that. of you have to escape one cage and then escape another, which is all you need to do, especially as big as the hell in a cell is these days. Mm-hmm. Like you can do that, you know, and have some element, like even having some element where you do the kennel from hell, but instead of dogs out there, you actually have like. You know, something like uh, you could put Roman Reigns. Piranhas. <laughs> yeah, piranhas. Sharks, with, sharks yeah. with laser beams attached to their that heads. That worked for, for MTV, right? Um, but no, but seriously, you could have, uh, like, uh, say, a, a, a lumber yeah, cage yeah. match. AJ versus Reigns right now, right? And then you could put, like, all their buddies, the club and the Usos, on the outside. You know, like, I think that could be kind of interesting. You know, um, I, I don't know. There's a point to escape then the cell or, or what, uh, but uh, it, we kind of have to be right. Wasn't that all right? Do you guys remember the video game Day of Reckoning? Yes, I believe they had something like that. Really? No, um, actually, right, right. no, you're thinking um, it's not Day of Reckoning, but it was another one that was on the GameCube. And the concept was like the story mode concept was that you were in like, like, base, like regular settings. Fighting off like security guards and stuff yeah. like that. Right, I think that's trying to get to WrestleMania. You actually right. had to throw security guards off an elevator. The only way you can eliminate people <laughs> is by literally murdering them and throwing them off the ledge. <laughs> this would work in Lucha Underground. <laughs> All accurate. All accurate. Yes. All right, guys. Uh, on that point, we're going to go to a video, uh, and uh, I think we're still looking back at some videos. I, I, I think we posted another one here. Yeah, uh, we did. Uh, yeah, we did. Sure, we did. Uh, Ten year anniversary. Our friends looking for group. We're hosting. Actually, we're host. They're hosting. Uh, we're going to be going back there to celebrate six years of the awesome cast here on the Sorgatron Media Network. Uh, so come out, play some games with us, and uh, and they have uh, they have VR, dude. They have like Oculus Rift and they have the um, HTC Vibe all set up and uh, a lot of other great uh, uh, console and, and PC games. So, you know, if you haven't gotten the new shiny stuff, they have it. You can play it and you can check us out doing the uh, celebrating six six episodes or six years of, of Awesome Cast, uh, also with an anniversary here this year. So, um, we'll be right back and we will not be doing the big question. We've got something special for you. Just wait, just wait, wait i'll tell you it has brought my wife and i closer together because it has helped me um embrace my love of professional wrestling and that has helped my wife embrace her love of professional wrestling and together as we embrace our love of professional wrestling we have something that we can share together and it makes us a better married couple thanks to the wrestling mayhem show Jennifer and I have started our own foundation, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast to Betterment. So far, only the Wrestling Mayhem show has been worthy of our contributions, but perhaps we'll find another decent podcast someday. We are back, Wrestling Mayhem show. I am still in San Diego at an Airbnb, and I got the wonderful crew, Mad Mike up Poughkeepsie, Amen to please down in uh, San Antonio, uh, Antonio Garza in El Paso, and Alex Cars, who's actually in my time zone up in San Bernard. Um, oh, jeez, California, San, San Bernardino. Bernardino, San Bernardino, California. I should know that with all the Apple news that was over that FBI case. You know, I heard so many times. It's all I can think about with that. Uh, but usually we do the big question here, but instead we're going to do the big email, right, Amen? Yes, it's a, it's a big one. 
It's, it's a big one. It's a big one. Riz had something to say. Riz and, had some stuff. And to I say. think we can we can have a good discussion around this because I think he's got a good idea here that we're going to suss out of this email. Yes, indeed. Uh, so let's get right into it. WMS, it's that boy. Okay, it's just me. It's fine. It's cool. Nothing going on here at all. Just sitting in this cryogenic chamber, clawing away at the door handle someone painted on with their own blood. That's all. Man, it's cold in here. So, you okay, Riz? Um, for the past... <laughs> The past two weeks, I've watched little to no wrestling programming at the right time, a la Raw on Mondays, NXT on Thursdays, I think it means Wednesdays, Lucha whenever they're on, even though I don't get that station, Impact Wrestling, Mad Mike can attest to this, that I haven't watched, that I have watched a little bit of Impact on Saturdays and Saturday Tuesdays. This is due to a couple things, really, but mainly the fact that we have a lot of choices in how we are entertained now. For instance, this Monday Raw was up against two highly anticipated things in the ratings that honestly took viewership away from the WWE product. The NBA playoffs that almost went into overtime, and the NHL playoffs that did go into overtime and was the main reason I couldn't watch the go-home show to Extreme Rules, which, by the way, looks amazeballs. I honestly think it's the internet's fault. It's the fact that I can pull up a legal website or another totally legal website or Hulu Replay, or Universal Channel, one of the many that run replays of Raw, and not miss a beat. NXT is always on the WWE Network. I can catch Lucha Underground, ROH, and the parts of TNA that are enjoyable. Hi, EC3, on the internet. I can be content in not knowing things happening in real time, because I can easily pull up that thing any day of the week, and watch it happen when I have the time to watch that thing. It's not that important anymore to watch a Monday Night Raw on a Monday night or a SmackDown on a Thursday or Friday or whenever SmackDown actually is nowadays. It's not that big of a deal. Heck, every pay-per-view ever is on the network, including the ones that are coming out this year and next year and the year after next year, so and so on. And it's, it's a strange time to be a 30-something wrestling fan where you grew up only listening to squiggly versions of King and McMahon to being a teenager and going to AOL AIM chat rooms and watch as someone typed in what was going on just because you didn't want to ask your parents to pay for a $50 Armageddon pay-per-view to now where you can watch the $50 Armageddon pay-per-view from your peanuts as well as all the rest of your little butt desires. I know this really has nothing to do with the product right now, but I just feel like I need to ramble a bit. It's not really a Riz rant, but more of a Riz ramble. Until next time, are you following Riz Plays Games in YouTube? I, it's, it's all one sentence. There is one chunk of words. Riz. Yeah. So, wrestling. Expert, expert rendition there. <laughs> I felt like Riz was in the room with us. Oh, magically. Magically. So, so, so the basic idea, it, does it matter to watch live? And I think, I think, I think you're right, especially when we're talking about things like a Lucha Underground where, and we've talked about spoilers and everything, you know, I mean, the, the fact that I'm, it's well known what's being filmed right now, right? I'm not, I'm not saying anything out of turn with that, right? Well, uh, I think, I think it also depends on how much you care about spoilers, just right, in general. Right. So there's that too, but, 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 you know, I mean, it, it, it but, but, but it's, Live is something that is not relatively new, but before Monday Night Raw, what did you watch live? Pay-per-views, if you could watch pay-per-views, right? Or yeah. Clash of the Champions, and there was a, a special uh, moment to that. There's not enough unpredictability in live right now to make it so worth it unless it's WrestleMania or NXT TakeOver at this point, right? And even that's funny because they've been doing stuff like on the West Coast at a weird time or they've been doing something um, in London, right? Uh, so so I think I think that's kind of disjointed that a little bit because there's so much of it. Because yeah. it used to be, oh, it's Monday, we watch live. Oh, it's that one pay-per-view a month or that's one pay-per-view every three months, you know? Um, so I think it's definitely made it less important. Now, if something actually happened on Raw, that like when's the last time something happened on Raw or you missed Raw and something happened and you heard about it the next day, it was like, oh, I missed it. Anderson Gallows. Okay. But even then, I mean, that, that so, but it, and they're getting back to that, right? That feels like they're getting back to that. The unpredict unpredictability. Mm -hmm. Dana Brooke. Okay. That's, but that's not like, I, I would argue Shane McMahon because that's something I heard people who I I had coworkers 
coming up to me at work the next day saying, so what's about right. this whole Shane McMahon thing? Like, right. I'm, nothing to that level has mm-hmm. happened in, like, 10 years. I would argue that CM Punk's truth well, that, that's the, uh, Shane McMahon, like, there was hints all over the internet. Yeah, I would. Yeah, the, the punk shoe would be the other one. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's almost impossible to do stuff like that now because, uh, because a WWE has a monopoly on everything, and two because of the internet. Yeah, because right. there's person. Yeah, yeah, and that's two elements with that. So, so that was, what was his general question? There wasn't a question. It was just kind well, of a statement. Do you need to watch wrestling live anymore? Is it? I just think it's a case of times are changing. Not and really. back when the whole idea of live was important was when you had two competing wrestling promotions who were vying for viewership and were vying for eyeballs. And right now, yeah, you should be doing that, but you don't really need to do that anymore. Um, Raw could Raw could honestly be taped and nobody would care. Yeah, mm, I, 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 I beg to differ on that. I beg to differ on that because, I mean, well, no, uh, w- when they have the couple of Raws out of the year from England, and it is pre-taped. The ratings go way down. I don't really way I, down. I I guess, but it, you know, it's not a case of yeah. I, people are, a lot of people yeah, now are doing drugs because you expect very interesting. And kind of you know, if you're surprised, cool. Because, but you're still uh, like we mentioned you know I've been before, up here in the mountains. We watch Raw because it is a thing January, that we do every week. Have it's not because. Oh, like, this like is going to be happening. Never had a chance you know, to watch. This is a thing, so Raw we need to watch. Live. You know, Raw this week. But, um, we do it because it's. I think it's a thing we always do. I want to say I basically, think there's a lot of people Raw who after WrestleMania actually watch it. I've made it a point to find some way to find the live stream. Could happen, and they don't miss it. And, and, and I've seen that with a lot of people. Like, because I can tell, like I get that if it's idea. It's going to happen. Like something's going to. I want to be sure that I'm there. And it started, you know, because it was the Raw after Mania. Yeah, that's very much reason. Something happens. So I've been kind of consistently trying to watch that just to make sure that I catch when something happens. And as a slight side note on this point of expecting something to happen, um, I wanted to kind of touch on the fact that apparently uh, someone claiming to be that Reddit user Mets fan forever is on Twitter now. And like prior to last night's Raw, he started talking about some stuff that was supposedly going to be happening to me within the next few weeks. Now, some of it he kept kind of, you know, hush-hush, but at one point he even says, oh, yeah, Finn Balor is backstage and he's going to debut on Raw tonight. Didn't happen. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's, yeah, that's so many people have been saying for weeks. And it's, and it's a case of you know, oh, it will it, eventually happen. It's like, so. click, it's like clickbait, probably. Yeah, the one week they're right. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like I even put up a video on on our YouTube page from the NXT Poughkeepsie show with Finn Balor addressing his Raw debut. Well, he said, even he said, he, said he wasn't going to Raw, Balor, but, but still, it's also weird. It's also weird because like when he lost the belt, like they there's that there's that video somebody took of him. Like outside greeting fans or whatever, where he said tells them see you guys on Monday. So is that a case of them like him just trolling guys? Like is like you know yes. he's a master yes, troll. Finn Balor, Finn Balor has been trolling everyone on social media since he arrived. Because and I just find that debate. very weird. Like I, found, I, like we're living in an age where like you're never invited like, to my house again. Happens, that you almost that have maybe. to lie to somebody. You know what I mean to get them. You know what I mean? Like, because we're but, so. But Amen. No. Amen. Amen. That's what wrestling is. <laughs> That's the carny side of the wrestling. <laughs> is, is, yes. 
and <laughs> and and he's staying to that and he's generating interest and he's making you believe and making you want to believe and he's doing very good with that. Yeah. I, I understand I, that. And, and I'm not knocking him go for that. I could go for But my thing is now. like if you're if you're outright saying like hey, Sorg, I'm gonna come to your house tomorrow and bring you a pie and I don't bring you a Why pie you, tomorrow. There is pizza and I'm pie. just like, Oh, I worked you. Like that's just me being a dick. But, but Eamon, so. you're also oh, not well. in the entertainment business. <laughs> now, now if you have a multi-million dollar movie and say, "Hey guys, Aquaman's going to be in this," and he's in it for literally 22 seconds, that's kind of a shitty move. Hey, Eamon is in the pie eating business, so uh, that I never say anything about pie eating. I said pie. I said delivery. that the wrong way. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're in. You're in my pie. We're we're, we're we're just we're we should just not take that. Oh, but my, we, I, we need going, to move away from pie. We need a pie sponsor. <laughs> we already have one. Slice on Broadway. Pizza pies. Sorg. Oh yeah. <laughs> but um, all right. Going. Go, I was gonna say going back to how like like live viewership and stuff like that. I also think it's just a case of like in the case of WWE in particular, how the shows are constructed now. Like, I remember, like, I, and going back to when I kind of started watching wrestling, I was watching Raw every week. Like, I liked when there was, like, a continual story that was, like, eye-catching every single week. You know what I mean? Like, there was something that was carrying over every single... Uh, I thought about this recently because it came up into a podcast I was listening to. But um, uh, <coughs> I remember the one thing I really loved when I was getting into wrestling was that whole storyline of when Kane unmasked. And, like, every week he did something crazy like he chokes and they were off off the stage he almost he tried to throw shane mcmahon into a flaming dumpster he got you know in a car wreck thing like he electrocuted Shane's testicles went to shane mcmahon in the hospital and, and you know there was something i was i was like what's ken gonna do this week you know what i mean like yeah, that's but we still we still have that yeah golden yeah yeah and, but now it's now it's can who's kane going to ensure this week yeah i don't yeah it's like what match is gonna happen this week you know I don't I mean? know. I, st- I still have like a what's New Day going to do this week? Yes. Because I always seem to pull yeah, okay. out something a little bit new and different. But before the New Day, like... Well, they're, they're starting to get back to that. I think for a long time, they stagnated on everything. And I think they're realizing that to in order to keep up with today's TV product, which is a hell of a lot stronger than it was back in the Attitude Era, mm-hmm. like... Back in the Attitude Era in the late 90s, there were not nearly the amount of TV options that there are today. Yeah. Like, that's just a fact. Like, TV has almost surpassed movies in terms of, like, writing and production and all that stuff. Like, so I think they're finally realizing that in order to get back to where they were, they kind of have to give a shit. Like, they they have to make you want to look forward to something every week and whether that is I mean not everything is going to be everyone's cup of tea but you ha- you have the New Day randomly come out of a, a time machine or hey what's Shane McMahon going to do now that he's back on Raw like are him and Stephanie is this going to be the week where him and Stephanie like are at odds with each other because you know it's coming mm-hmm. and they're teasing it very very well very very well and when that, because honestly, that's one of the things that like I love watching their segments together, because you know they're like they've had chemistry for years on screen, but now you're just waiting for that other shoe to drop, and that other shoe has a sledgehammer in it, and it's fronted by Motorhead. Like you're well, just waiting for it, and it's gonna be awesome when it happens. Is that what we're waiting for? Because I, 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 for me in that case. And, and it's the cynical part of me, and it's the like at the side of me that, like you said, like wants to see something crazy happen. Like I'm waiting for things to turn to a shoot. Like because there's a lot of rumor of the fact that there is real life heat going on here. Like there is real life issues between Shane and Stephanie and and Vince and and, and Triple H. Like that's what um, I think Bret Hart said in like a podcast when he was at Payback that like Shane wasn't interacting with like that side of things. You know what I mean? Like he was getting stuff relayed to him. There's almost a relay system between the two parties. Yeah, but Eamon, it could be a huge giant work. I mean, next week after Raw, we're getting that Shane McMahon tell-all and Stephanie's writing a memoir. Like, 
they're coming out with stuff that I, I mean, the seventies memoir is obviously not going to be involved with it, but they're, they're, pl- they're using the internet to work us. Right. It's all a well orchestrated media plan. That's what like, you do I mean, is you put these seeds here and interest here, interest here, interest here. And nothing, there's- and nothing in wrestling is a complete shoot. You know, like uh, when CM Punk did the pipe bomb, like it wasn't him just doing it off script. Like someone said, like, we're going to do this. Touch on some real stuff. Touch on your real feelings. But it's still a thing that they're working. You know? Yeah, like, he had bullet points. Yeah. And I'm not saying this is going to be like this. But that's, that's what I'm more claiming for for this other than Triple H is going to come back. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah, but I, I think because we were all saying that we were expecting like a, like a brand split. And maybe they didn't do it right after WrestleMania because they wanted to tease this kind of stuff, but that could still happen. They have a plan. They have a vision board for what's coming up in wrestling, guys. And it involves hashtag demon versus dead man. <sighs> maybe. Maybe <laughs> it does. You, know, you talk about that. You, you, you talk about that interest. Like, isn't, isn't a lot of that kind of pushed over to Twitter now, right? Or, or at least it supports it, or you know, whether it be this conversation between Bray Wyatt and 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 uh, the Demon Finn Balor, right? That that like, oh yeah, how's your buddy Triple H? I'm going to play the uh, throne him at WrestleMania, and and oh, oh yeah, the, the Balor's going after the Undertaker, you know, like it that's a little bit of poking, you know, and getting getting us worked up, getting the fans worked up, getting social media worked up, you know, to because you know WWE listens to that like they do they absolutely do obviously how many tweets how many times have I have to see the same tweet cloud graphic uh with whatever subject that the week is that somebody calls to on the screen and then AJ Styles apparently gets bewildered by it and forgets his lines um but uh <laughs> but you know like that's they're that's part of it that's part of it right i mean hell the whole new day league of nations storyline started on twitter Exactly. They get to do that, test the waters a little bit, and then they can go to writers, bookers, agents and say, look what we did over here and look at all the favorites and retweets we got. You know, uh, don't you think this would be great on TV? The fans are into it. You know, I mean, that's it's it's like a Kickstarter. If we can get enough people to fund that pilot episode of uh, of something, you know, we can get somebody to say, oh, look, there's a fan base by this, right? It, it's the same kind of idea. These are self-starters in, in, in their ca- own characters, and they're using the fan base, right, to talk to the higher-ups. And uh, and maybe we'll see some of this stuff. Maybe we won't. Or, well, probably mostly happen. There's some weird hardcore fans that will be mad when they don't see those matches lined up at the next WrestleMania. And Sorg, you know who started it all? Roman Reigns. Zach. Rider. There you go. I'm not joking. Not joking. The Long Island IZ. Can't wait for he, Zach he, Ryder's book. They just <laughs> they just break everybody. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because I kind of want him to talk about that phase of his life, you know, and going into that and everything. Like, I think it'd be a really cool wrestling slash uh, for a section of it social media um, uh, book, right? So, anyways. Well, that was fun. Just, uh, just uh, instead of writing a book, just use tweet longer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That'd be really great. <sighs> Mike. Yes. You watched a movie this week. Would you tell me about this movie you watched? Oh, Sorg, I, I watched a movie. Um, so you guys remember that movie Countdown that we were talking about? The one where it looked like it was like sudden death, but with wrestling and Dolph Ziggler and Rusev had a gun and all that crazy stuff. Um, yeah, it's not like sudden death at all. It's it's really not. There's about five minutes where they're at a WWE event. Aww. And then the rest, and it's not even the end of the movie. Like, uh, but I will say it gave us the secret origin story of the Dolph Ziggler and Lana pairing. <laughs> because when Rusev, um, first of all, disarms an officer, <laughs> Rusev flat out steals Dolph Ziggler's gun in the movie and holds it on him. As Dolph Ziggler is going for his badge, 
he super kicks Rusev. As he grabs his gun and runs away, Lana goes, now that's a real man right there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Legitimately. And I'm like, oh, so that's how that storyline started. <laughs> It's, it's kind of like the Total Divas of that, where you find out the, the subtext later on. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, basically. Um, also, Kane is in the movie. Kane is um, the uh, the Dolph Ziggler superior, his lovable, gruff superior <laughs> in the movie. Um, it, it's, it's not. It, it was okay. It was fine. I kind of wish I didn't buy it. Because I thought it was gonna be. Oh, you poor bastard! I know. Well, I used the gift card, so oh, that's if okay. you have a gift card, go nuts! It's it's a fun little action flick, um, but uh, and Ziggler's fine in it. He's okay. It's just the well, the people he's surrounded by. Well, you can tell they they haven't been acting long. Like there there are no other big names in the movie besides uh, Ziggler. Oh no. Sorry, oh, don't do it. Oh, I thought it was the trailer, but it's actually a guy talking over the movie trailer. So <laughs> I, I was hoping it's not even like it's it's a still picture, and he's in the corner. What is this? I'm sorry, I thought I was showing the trailer. That's not wow. even that's not yeah, even yeah. a picture from the movie. I don't I'm think. Not, no, I don't think so. I think that's the guy's. That's oh no, that's role. that's oh, from, from the movie. That's from the movie. Yeah. Hello, All internet. Right. All right, CM Paul. So you got a little bit of a plug on the Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, but anyways. Um, well, there you go. Is this a scene or something? No, it's the actual trailer. Okay, the guy yeah. with the guy in the corner. Um, I'm not in my studio. I'm not in my element. So uh, this is what you get. <laughs> so it's just stuck on landscape. Thank. Yeah, like I kind of wish the whole thing was like sudden death. Like we, like the trailer kind of intimated that it was. Yeah. But it's actually just about uh, rescuing a little kid who has a bomb strapped to him. Oh no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it's pretty dark it's bad news Mm -hmm. um well there you go i'm looking forward to that from my local library myself uh so so go oh it's gonna be fun sorg it's gonna be sorg um i may uh, i may see if i can just get you the copy of this somehow (laughs) okay (laughs) don't see that on the show uh but anyway um well i think i mean i mean just mail you the dvd oh okay okay yeah what that Mm. See, I'm, I'm I'm glad I got back in here for this because uh, a couple of friends of mine do a podcast where they do reviews of WWE films, and uh, they did a review and a commentary track oh, for God. Countdown. So, trust me, Countdown is a good movie, but it's even better with this commentary track. I, I'm I'm going to argue your question. That's a good movie. It's not even the best movie put on by WWE films. I mean that legitimately. Like it's not in my top five of WWE films. I I think the biggest issue is that the WWE live event part of it was only like they basically what? they basically showed every single scene in the trailer for a WWE yeah. live. Oh, event there's the time movie. the Ascension came out and then Sin Cara they, came out. Well, they they went through the whole trailer within the, like the first twenty thirty minutes of the film. Best representation of pro wrestling in films is the original Highlander. Um, I'm going to say The Wrestler. Oh, okay. I meant, I meant like an event. <laughs> Much better movie. I meant like Much event. better movie. All right. On that note, because uh, things are getting weird on the computer size, guys, so let's just roll with this. I think I know why. Uh, uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I got mine. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that Puerto Rico is really boring. <laughs> like, like, like so boring. And I, all right, they're calling themselves the Shining Stars. The flag of Puerto Rico only has one star on it. The Giants. Is that just their way of saying that the two of them together should make up Carlito, but it doesn't? Maybe they're the new Gemini. Christ. I, I saw a meme online that like I and I don't like to like draw like oh real life messages from like memes, but it makes a really good point. Like they're like, we're gonna give you this gimmick of being with Rosa Mendes, it didn't work. We're gonna give you this gimmick of being matadors, it didn't work, but we're gonna still give you something else. Yet Damien Sandow, all his gimmicks have been working for the most part. 
and then like he's the one that gets fired. Yeah, that's weird. There's there's, there's something else going on there. Like I was saying, like, the fact, yeah, there, like really. does Primo and Epico have some shit on him? No, like, this, do, do they have some happy. shit on Vince? It's just to make Carlos Colo happy. Mm-hmm. They know what happened yeah. to Bruiser Brody. It's a it's, it's been a pretty good connection. Yeah, <laughs> it's a WWE is actually WWE is actually witness protection for Primo and Epico. Like the only thing different about them is now they're wearing shorts. New people. Hey, they had a new finish. They had a new finisher. They brought back total elimination. Yeah. Right. Riz learned in the chat room that uh, yeah he got hit here just in time for the conversation. He started with the email, by the way. Uh, he learned that out of all the tools on the asylum cage, the mop will be used the most. Accurate, likely. Yep. Uh, who went? Eamon went. Uh, 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 cars. What did you learn? Uh. I learned that uh, Wrestler Redacted is the best uh, guy in Lucha Underground. You shut your fucking mouth, Cars. You shut your goddamn mouth. I don't want to hear about this new Luchador Redacted. That match match between Luchador Redacted against Wrestler Redacted, uh, when they did the move Redacted, was amazing. Also something about Bagel Bites. Um, Oh, Bagel Bites. I don't think think we're NDA'd on on Bagel Bites. Mm. Now I'm just gonna be looking out for bagel bites every week. Thanks, Sorg. Bagel yeah, bites, God damn catered, it. catered bagel bites, and Fanta, and Fanta. He's rocking the Fanta. I'm rocking a Corona. We are living it up. Great. Now Thank I have to look. For, now I have to look for Dario Cueto in all Fanta commercials. You have him living too. Famous think? Famous B's gonna st- gonna star in a bagel bite ad. That's the that's you have Cage is Cage is gonna change his new get his bagel bites. Yeah, we'll live Cage's new, new Cage's new catchphrase is going to be pizza in the morning, pizza in the <laughs> evening, pizza at supper time. Because when pizza's on a bagel, you can be a machine anytime. That's a long catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it may, works, may, wanna, may wanna shorten that down. <laughs> it, it's in beta. It's in beta. I actually had a conversation with someone in the VIP section about that jingle. So good. Mm-hmm. Who else isn't gone? I, I can't keep track anymore. Tony Garza. Yeah. Tony Garza. so much. Uh, I learned that I have the hots for a hundred and plus year old woman. Um, what? Go on. Are you talking about Game of Thrones? I'm talking about Katrina. What are you guys about? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yes. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point, um, Garza. I just got up to the section where she was having a makeup section with uh, uh, Phoenix, I think, at the beginning of the show. Uh, that's what I, I, was, that's what I think it's some podcasting. Sorg, I think it's amazing. There, you are simultaneously behind and ahead in Lucha Underground. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not in a hurry now. <laughs> simultaneously yeah. was gonna, behind the and ahead. Biggest gap say, imaginable. He, he just got introduced to Mariposa recently. Like, I'm pretty sure. No, I think I've seen Mariposa. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no that was, I think that I saw. Was, I was gonna I, say I, you I, saw I, Mariposa. I think I saw her. Otherwise, other than is that. Who is is that? Is that who Marty, Marty who incident sister. react? Who, who incident uh, redacted was about? <laughs> I, I, I don't you know. motherfuckers! I don't know about that. I hate I hate both of you so yeah. much. You know what, Sorg? Sorg, just for That's this, show title. I I it's am redacted. sending you. I am sending you countdown. <laughs> it's a, it's as just, a punishment just to, just to get back at me. It's as a um, punishment. Wow. Um, <laughs> Mad Mike. I um and I learned this from the wrestler trivia I was at. Um Paul Heyman had told a lot of the ECW guys that they were going to be back on TV, and instead Paul Heyman did rollerball. <laughs> Jeez. Wait, what? <laughs> yep. Yep. That okay. I, that is a, that is a truth fact as far as I know. <laughs> but that was something I definitely learned this week. Wow. Also, WWE Studios had something to do with one of the X-Men movies. What? Yeah, back in the day, apparently. What before something? they were like a legitimate... I don't know, but before they were like a legitimate studio, they had something to do with one of the X-Men movies. Sure. Is it kind of like how Coliseum Video was just a label under like a... Uh, like 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 the distributor that, that put out WWE's, WWF's Coliseum Videos was actually like a porn distributor. I think like, uh, yeah, I think I think it's something like that. Like, did they like buy a production company and just call it WWE Studios and like assimilated them or something? Maybe 
So, mm-hmm. all right. You know what I learned, guys? I learned. What'd you learn, Sword? <laughs> if this is about Lucha Underground, get kill you. Well, I'm glad I'm as far away from you in the <laughs> in the United States as I can be right now because the sign is real, guys. And Alex was right. I was right um, about everything. I'm like, no, that's a miniature that they do. No, no, the sign is real and it has it has the question mark and it's completely there. And oh, look, somebody. <laughs> I, I like that you can see my comment. <laughs> Not fair. <laughs> Not fair. It's like I was I was right about the side. I was right about the VIP stuff. The weekend yes. in which I was just right. Yes, it was a good weekend for Alex. <laughs> and Alex also got now we'll have to remind everybody, but Alex got some very good product placement um, oh, yeah. on the show on the show. <laughs> uh so uh, look out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, hopefully, you're still selling that in a year when this comes oh, out. I'm sure I will. Be. <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, I, uh, I don't, it sounds like everything's like pretty late season that we saw too. So, yeah. uh, but anyways, not that there's anything that happened. Yeah, other than that, <laughs> so, one thing with uh, you know what's his face. Yeah. I mean, I've said it. We, we should, Alex and I should sit down and completely have a tell all podcast about this and sit on it until these episodes come out. <laughs> I can... Hey, if you, if you guys want to do an episode of the midweek war, like a year and a half advance, and then we can compare it to our episode of the midweek war I think that'd be when great. it happens. I think that'd be great. You... It's like those things you did in, um, in like elementary school where you like. <laughs> Like those random time machine things, it's a time capsule, yeah. Because yeah, like, actually, the, the best thing about it is the best thing about it is like what you guys saw in the temple, you don't know the backstory, mm-hmm. so you don't know, like, if someone's a no. secret cop or well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and as it is, like, the, the way like, the tapers are done are so disjointed, like, you don't even know if. Like I, I think there's parts of episodes that we didn't see. Yeah, I was you gonna know, say I, I think mean, these it's, tapings it's, are gonna go across different episodes as it is. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just I mean it's not even you know it, it, like it's so and I, I don't you know it was over two days and stuff yeah. so you never know so um and, but it's it's taped like TV so it, 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 it's and and it's different and that's I think all I can say about that you know so. Um, but it was enjoyable. If you're ever out in LA, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I can try to try to get in on that. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what the record way is to get in on it though. There's like a number or something or there's stuff on message boards, but no, so. uh, from what I've heard that they, um, when they do have tickets available, they have uh, an email account that you have to contact. Yeah. And then, yeah. Like, and again, all, it's done in method. like, a television it's on like yeah. a tv taping yeah. yeah exactly exactly so but it was great um so i want to give a shout out at least uh, uh meeting christopher joseph and and the crew um were very uh, they're they're you know they know sh- they know the show they're they're fans of the show fans of what you guys are doing in the midweek war because i presume anybody said they love the show we're talking about the midweek war and specifically the lucha underground and that's uh at least three of you guys here are the guys that made that happen uh, and of course, Carlin's on, on top of it as well. Uh, so, so, uh, one, thank you guys <laughs> for helping with this opportunity. Finally, Sorg. So, um, no, uh, one, one thing I did also forget, I wanted to mention, uh, one of the Lucha Underground producers liked my tweet. I want, um, Lucha Underground and Battle Bots to be in the same universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it'd be good. I think it'd be good. I, because I think, it, Sorg, have you watched BattleBots? Has any, have any of you guys watched BattleBots? I've seen it, but like not the newer ones, but like the old ones with like Chris Jericho and Mick Foley. The first, oh no, Sorg, you gotta watch BattleBots because they they do it like Lucha Fucking Underground. Ooh, I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. Like this needs to go down there. There's there's backstories and shit. It's amazing. Now there are fucking drones in Lucha Under and BattleBots. Like, they're Jeez. drones. I'm Jeez. not even joking. One All of right, the drones guys. spits fire, Sorg. On that note, thank you, everybody. Like Wrestling Drago. Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412 407 WMS0. Wait, 407 412 41. I don't know, like. Hmm. 402. Wait, I 412 206 Good times. Good times. By the way, hold on. 6753. We're just naming numbers now. 
Good times at wrestling mayhem show.com and uh, subscribe to us on all the places you can subscribe to us. And thank you, everybody, join us live at wrestling mayhem show.com. And uh, for the emails, especially ones like Riz that helped us take over half of the show, and now he's giving us his phone number. Um, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thanks everybody for being on here again Mad Mike in Poughkeepsie, New York Mad Mike 4883 on Twitter you can ask him how it was like to work for WWE uh, you can also check out Amon at Amon 2 Please and Inspire Pro Wrestling you can hear his voice on Smart Mark Video where they uh, have those shows and Antonio Garza the WrestlingRevolution.com and of course Power 2 number 2 The Smarks and uh, Alex Carr's out here in the Cali. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.